Welcome, and follow me as a Realme P3, and today I will show you a couple tweaks and the tricks you can do on this device. So to get started, let's open up our settings. And I'm going to just begin by navigating into wallpaper and style, which is a general location where you can customize and not just wallpaper, uh, but also things like your fonts always on display and so on. I'm going to talk about only a couple of them, not really focusing on all of it. It's so number one and always on display. You can number one, turn it on because it is disabled by default. So now when you lock your device, it will actually have always on display. I can also obviously customize it, display settings. Um, actually, no, not here. Oh, there we go. By scrolling down, we have more options. So you can add some weird things. You can change it. You have analog clocks and so on. So you can choose whatever you want, or you can have the whatever mode, like a classic one or the other thing. Now also, in here, we have things like fingerprint animations for when you're scanning your finger and colors. Colors will represent all the things like the colors right here, here. Um, and also in the settings, so if I go back, these right here. So you have the customization to basically change a bunch of uh, these colors and you can base them, oops, you can base them on wallpaper if I'm correct. Right. Yep, we have wallpaper colors. So it pulls uh, these colors from the wallpaper I have right here. So it would then closer match your vibe of your home screen, which obviously some people will like. I personally like to keep it as it is by default, as when you select any of them, it will change all the accent colors all throughout the device to the same one. So as an example, when you have things like blue here, uh, reddish here and uh, orange here, now it's all just this kind of gray blue color almost. So that obviously removes flare from it. And same thing goes right here. Most of these okay, right here, these are looking fine, but let's see this one. So even though it looks fine right here, oh, never mind, it's different colors still. Typically, you would have all these colors changed to this single one. Anyway, let's move on to home screen and lock screen. And here we have the home screen layout. We have two modes, uh, the drawer mode and standard. Now, standard is more standard for Apple rather than Android, but whatever. And below that, we have a drawer layout, which allows you to add additional column so in here, instead of having only four, you would have five. So everything would be just kind of more tightly packed, but also allow you to have more applications visible on a screen at a given moment. Additionally, we should also have, oh, that won't be here. That will be right here, home screen layout. So again, you can also uh, tighter pack your icons right here to have more of them visible on your home screen. And we have the pull down icon gesture. This is a one handed mode, if I remember correctly. Yes, it is. Uh, so if I enable this, go back. There we go. You can see it kind of works. So it pulls icons from higher up. There we go. And now whenever I drop my finger on any of these, you can see that they kind of lift up when, I, when they're selected. I let it go. It automatically will open up the application. It's a nice feature if it only actually worked most of the time. Now, it seems like it works much better with buttons uh, as a navigation style rather than gestures. So if you use buttons, it could be a pretty neat feature. If you use gestures, uh, not so much. It, for me, is usually a kind of miss. Give me a sec. Okay, uh, anyway, continuing on, let's get back to the settings right here. We have also swipe down on home screen. This is another thing that I personally really like, which allows you to change it to notification and quick settings. I don't really care about the global search. I do care about notifications. So now I can swipe down at any point on the screen. I don't need to do it from the very top to get the specifically toggles is what I'm interested in. So it just makes it much easier for me to uh, get to the things that I actually want to navigate to with just one hand. Uh, typically, like I said, you would have to swipe from the very top to do this, but with this option, you can just swipe up, swipe down at any point on the screen, and it will work, as long as you're on the home screen, I should add. Now, if uh, we scroll a little bit further down, here is one option that I personally probably would recommend turning off if uh, you might be bothered by it but don't know how to turn it off, a wallpaper carousel. This is the wallpaper uh, slideshow that you get on your lock screen, which is enabled right now, so right now we have oranges. Uh, 
Okay, never mind. It looks like this isn't the... Oh no, there it is. So now it's a different wallpaper. Different wallpaper, though these look like AI-generated wallpapers, not the wallpaper carousel. Or it is. I'm kind of confused right now. So these are definitely wallpaper carousel. This doesn't seem like they are. This definitely does seem. This does. Okay, so I'm not really sure right now which wallpapers uh, they show. Like, uh, or maybe they swapped it. But generally, uh, you will encounter a bunch of wallpapers that you probably don't like. And to get rid of this, you can just toggle this crap off right here. And now we don't have wallpaper carousel. I personally don't like to see wallpapers of brick walls, uh, luggages, or maids cleaning, so I just like to turn it off, but to each their own. Now, if we go back and now move to the display and brightness, we have light and dark mode at the very top, but below that we have the schedule mode. This will allow us to swap between light and dark mode uh, from either sunset to sunrise or on a custom timer, meaning the device will just switch between them and give you what could be considered best uh, mode for a current time of day. So I personally like to have it a dark mode during night time so I don't get flashbanged by my, by my device and uh, a light mode during the daytime considering I would prefer not to squint while I'm trying to see what's on my screen uh, when uh, you know typical summer sun is just blasting and blowing everything uh, out and it's kind of hard to see the display. So if you have the same kind of grapes you can set that up and from now on the device will be swapping from light to dark mode automatically. And also moving further down uh, we have screen, screen color mode. This is basically how saturated your display is. Now we have right now vivid, uh, we also have natural and pro mode. So natural uh, gets a little bit warmer, looks a bit more pleasant and then on the pro mode we have uh, cinematic and brilliant. So use, uh, the cinematic uses uh, display P3 mode. Uh, for some reason vivid seems less vivid than cinematic. Now I'm not sure what kind of P3 they're using, but definitely not the one that I would have expected, I would say. Uh, then we have brilliant, which holy crap, this is even more saturated, wow. Uh, that is almost uncomfortable to look at. So I will stick with the natural. This is uh, what I typically like, something that is a little bit more reasonable in terms of specifically red colors. I don't know, maybe red colors are just bothering my eyes in particular, but I always find it to be egregiously overdone, those specific colors. Uh, other than that, most other ones seem to be fine. So I like to set it to natural, but at the end of the day, it's completely up to you. You also have the option to change the color temperature of the entire display. So you can choose whatever color you want from the wheel. You also have cold and warm one. And let's see. Nope. Okay, never mind. We don't have the automatic uh, white balance here. So yeah, you can just set it up yourself and that's it. Now moving further down, we have uh, a bright HDR video mode. So this is uh, going to increase the brightness of HDR videos, assuming you have HDR video. And we also scrolling further down, we have full screen uh, for apps. This is a thing that you might sometimes need to mess around with. So I personally found this option to be handy when uh, using before, at least, I don't know if this is still the case. Things like the Steam, uh, Steam Connect, is it? Let me check. Basically the cloud streaming kind of application for Steam, so you can connect to your computer at home from your phone. So this is um, Steam Link. So Steam Link for some reason has uh, this kind of look even when you're opening up uh, connecting to your computer. So I like to add Steam specifically or Steam Link application to basically have this appearance where the content is obstructed just by the uh, hole punch camera and I don't have this black bezel. So that's just what I like to do. And like I said, if you fi find that some applications give you this black bezel right here at the very top where your status bar normally is, you can go in here, uh, select the application and just have it uh, be displayed fully in, uh, in the or default, I guess. So in there, in this kind of mode, 
this black bar that you can see right here will disappear. And obviously you will have more content visible on your screen. Uh, so that black bar does shift the content, so you're not using at that point your full screen. Anyway, let's move over now to notification and quick settings and then status bar. Here is another option that I like uh, for clean and minimal look of my device, which is hiding useless garbage from the screen. As you can see, there's a bunch of trash right here that you personally don't care. Ironically, the one that you might actually care to see uh, as a new user would be to see if NFC is enabled, but by default it's turned off because God forbid you would like some privacy and would like to turn it off. Uh, so it's hidden and on some devices, I don't know if it's the case right here, NFC is also hidden away from the uh, static or, or panel right here. So you'd have to like literally add it. So in those devices, it's just absolutely annoying that it's done like that. But if you are the type, type of person that uses NFC all the time, you might want to just have it disabled uh, as in from showing. I do that myself as I pay with my phone. So NFC is always on and it would be useless for me to have it in my status bar when I always know that it's on. Additionally, another thing that I like to turn off is things like Bluetooth. Again, I have it always on, so it's useless to me, as well as Wi-Fi and other things that I do know that I have always enabled. Though here, it doesn't look like we can hide Wi-Fi. Another thing that I can do in here is customize your battery indicator. Now, there is three modes, battery style. So we have the horizontal, vertical, loop, and don't show. I will point out one thing. Right now, you can see I have percentage inside of the battery. It tells me that I have 31% battery life. The inside of the battery percentage will only uh, be able to be inside if you're using the horizontal battery. For any other option, it's always going to be outside of the battery. But you can get rid of it if you don't want to show it at all. Now, moving on into... Actually, I don't know if there's anything to move on to. Yeah, I think actually that's about it. So in any case, that sums it up. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.